Okay, welcome to the stream again for everyone who stuck with me. I've never had that happen before. I just needed to restart my streaming box here. I guess it just crashed or something. But I now have audio on YouTube and video in general on, um, well, I have video in general on YouTube and I have sound on, um, on Facebook. So I lost most of the audience through all that, but I'm going to go ahead and go on anyway. Um, welcome. Today we're going to be comparing uh, the Alexander 103 and the Yamaha 871. Why these two horns? Because the Yamaha 871 is a true Geyer style horn. That's Although I know it's Japanese, it's made clearly for the American market. It feels like a very American horn. And we have the Alexander 103, which, as an American player, feels very foreign. Um, to those of you who are from outside of the United States, the Alexander 103 is a very rare horn here. I'm not saying no one uses it, but not very many people use it. And it can feel very foreign to someone who doesn't. Number one, one of the first things that I notice is that the ergonomics of this horn are very different. For one, your hand is down pretty low. Um, on an American horn, I'm used to holding the horn about here. The advantage of having it low is that it, it gives you more leverage over the horn, so it's easier to hold this way. But the disadvantage is that the horn is not balanced, so you feel most of the weight tipping towards your face and then you almost have to work harder to counteract that versus um, a more american style guy or a crisp style horn where the hand is placed in a more balanced position where the weight is more balanced between this and this also the bell position of this horn is really far back so i'm used to playing my horn with my bell about here. But on this horn, I have to play it way back so I can feel my right arm pulling really far back in order to hold this horn. Um, this, aside from that, um, Alexander's are usually mechanical linkage because in Europe they prefer mechanical linkage over string linkage. Um, I find mechanical linkage is, a, even if it's great mechanical linkage, it is a little bit louder um, than string linkage. Um, more susceptible to um, you know, issues or jamming, but it does have its advantages too. Um, to me, uh, mechanical linkage does feel slightly more responsive, slightly faster than, um, than string linkage, which is probably the reason for the reason that it is used more outside of the United States. Other than that, um, the circle of an Alexander 103 is really small. That's why you know, for Marcus Bona, you have cases like the MB5 Baby 1, the MB4 Baby 1, and the MB3 Compact, and these other really small cases that really only fit in Alexander 103 or Alexander 103 type horns. Because on a crystal horn, the circle is wider, and on a Geyer style horn, the circle is much wider. And so you just need a bigger case uh, for the instruments. Let me play this horn for a little bit and let's do a comparison versus the Yamaha 871. Thank you. 
yeah, the ergonomics of this horn would really be a challenge. I don't know if you guys know this, but I really kept wanting to pull my hand farther up the instrument. Oh. Other than that, though, it's a nice, clear, open sound. Um, no, no real complaints about the sound at all, other than it's, it is frankly different than what I'm used to. Now let's take a look at the Yamaha 871. Again, the Yamaha 871 is a truly Geyer style horn. Um, a few years ago, it replaced the Yamaha 667V as the premium Geyer style horn in Yamaha's lineup. Um, this horn has absolutely nothing to do with the Yamaha 667V. So it can't even really be compared as an upgrade. It's just completely different wrap, completely different horn. Uh, and I would say the same thing with the comparison between the Yamaha 667 and the Yamaha 671, which are the lower end professional horns um, in Yamaha's lineup. Holding this horn, it feels to me, just because it's what I'm used to, it feels a lot more comfortable than the Alexander. So my bell is in a position more where I'm used to it. The hand is much farther up the circle everything feels more balanced as I, as I'm used to it. Um, immediately, uh, and this is just a trait of Yamaha. I, I like Yamaha horns, but the valve section is just very heavy. It's a very, um, it takes more force than I would like just uh, to move the keys and a little, little louder than I would like either. Very, be clear, those are very small, very small criticisms. But I, I would prefer a wider action in the valves. Now let me play this one. So yeah, this horn has a more meatier sound, um, a bit more veiled, not as, you know, not as open and light as the, um, as the Alex 103. Um, the Alex 103 was, um, easier to play, but I felt like this horn, the sound would fit in better and at least in most of the orchestras that I end up playing in. Let me see, I have a few comments here. It's interesting that Alex's aren't near as popular as in the United States as other European made horns, uh, such as Paxman's. That's because other European made horns really don't share any DNA with the Alex 103. Like buying a, for example, one of our more popular horns at the shop, the Rico Kuhn W293. That's not a horn that's really made to like fit in in a section of Alex's. It's a European made horn and it's super high quality, but it's a European made horn for, um, it's a, it's a European made horn for a North American market. And that's where the sound concept is. And that's where the feel is. Um, so it's not really uh, comparable to an Alex 103. A Paxman is not comparable at all 
That's a completely different type of horn, more in the British tradition. And I know many Brit British players play Alex 103s, but uh, you know, a, a Paxman 20M is not really a comparable horn. Uh, comparable horn to the Alex 103 would be something more like the Dirk D3, which is a similar rap. So that's a horn with similar rap, um, very similar style, something that's really, um, you know, made to have the same sound profile and be comfortable um, to an Alexander 103 player. I would say the same thing about the um, Cornford horns. It's been a long time since I've played any of those. But for what I remember, those are really more European horns for European players. Um, even Engelbert Schmidt, Engelbert Schmidt has his um, compact taper. So an Engelbert Schmidt compact horn is made to more for like a European sound, a European market. While his golden cut taper is much more suited to um, to North America. And that's why Engelbert uh, Schmidt came up with the compact taper to, um, to pr produce something that's more comfortable sound wise and feel wise to, uh, to a European player. Uh, that's why Alexanders aren't popular here because they don't really fit in as well uh, compared to um, other European made horns that you may have heard of. Uh, do you think the Alex has a brighter sound than the Yamaha? Um, the, and a lot of ways I try to avoid bright and dark because having helped out lots of people pick out equipment, the words bright and dark mean different things to different people. They really do. Some people would say bright means strident. Some people would say bright means colorful. Some people will say bright means thin. Some people will say bright just means more higher overtones in the sound. Um, what I would say is that the Alexander 103 definitely has a more, um, to my ear, a more open sound. A more open, lighter sound. And uh, sounds great. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Eric D. Leon, what mouthpiece are you playing with? I'm playing with my um, Varus uh, PF mouthpiece, which, yes, in the um, Alexander 103 does not um, does not fit super well. Um, but what I did is I have a – this is a temporary trick you can use to try a horn. I have a little piece of paper – uh, down in the receiver of the Alex 103 so that my mouthpiece uh, fits in at the proper depth. So I can do a proper comparison here. Because otherwise, uh, with the mouthpiece going in too far, the horn can start to sound a little hollow and uh, the intonation can be thrown off. Um, so yeah, let me play a little bit more and make some more observations on the horn. Let's do something loud this time.
yeah, so I definitely preferred the Yamaha in that comparison. Just had a more projecting sound to my ear. Um, although, I mean, the Alexander 103 playing the short call is a very iconic sound. Because if you hear any German opera playing it, that's probably what they're playing it on. Um, but yeah, those are the differences um, between the Yamaha and the Alex 103. You know, one is definitely not better than the other. Uh, the Yamaha is really, I, I think it's truly a professional level horn. You know, by professional, I mean, you know, professionals could pick it up, play it, and have no problem with it. In fact, I know several professionals who, who, who do use the, who do use the Yamaha. Um, it's, a, what is the price? It's $7,200. So if you're looking for a truly professional horn, it's a great deal because most other professional horns are in the uh, 9,000 9, range and up. In the Alex 103, if you're looking for, if you're looking for, you know, a brighter, lighter sound, a bit more open. Um, or if you listen to the Berlin Philharmonic and you just you really want you really want that Berlin sound, um, then the Alexander 103 is going to be it's going to be a good option for you. Let me see if there are any other questions here before we end. Is there a difference in horn tuning, uh, European and American? Um, in general, European horn tuning will be higher. In general, though, like there are lots of American. Traditionally, American orchestras tune to 440. A equals 440 hertz. But um, there are lots of American orchestras that do 442 now, which is a more um, European tuning, uh, A442. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my answer to that question. Do you personally find it more difficult to blend with other horns when playing a 103? You know, I haven't I haven't personally played an Alexander 103 um, in an orchestra. From um, from my time with one, I would say that yes, for me, it would be harder to get it to blend in the orchestras that I play with. But, you know, that's not necessarily a universal concept. Um, lots of players, you know, I went to see an L.A. Philharmonic concert. I've seen a few L.A. Philharmonic concerts. And every time I've seen Andrew Bain, he's been playing in Alexander 103. And he, he has no problem blending at all. Um, I know in the past, you know, recent years, some members of the Cleveland Orchestra have brought in Alex 103 and to a section of cons and and they blend just fine and there are other major orchestras that have alexander 103s in them and blending is not a problem i think it really goes more to your style of playing and does you know does the alexander 103 produce a sound for you easily enough that you can blend with others for me just the way i play I would probably be a little too hot and a little too hollow on an Alexander 103. Um, but you know, if I spent the next four months playing it, that that may not be the case. Um, here we go. Hi from France. I have the understanding Alex 103 has a higher resistance than Gyrus horns. How does it affect one playing? Do we need to put extra pressure to control the sound? Well, I'm going to start from the back of that question first. Uh, and that answer is no. Horns have different levels of resistance. But the universal to great horn playing is that you do not fight that resistance. You play with that resistance. A teacher of mine once said one of the most influential things to me that I, I keep with me every day. Horn playing should be easy. If you're fighting something, you're doing something wrong. So if there's more resistance to the horn, 
that means you need to put less air into the horn. You need to put less air and faster air into the horn. Um, you don't just like, oh, it has higher resistance. Well, I need to like put in, put in more air. I need to put in more pressure. I need to like break through this resistance. It's all about just playing with the resistance, laying back, making horn playing easy. Um, as far as the comparison of resistance, you know, let me test it. So the three horns I just played, um, the one I played in the middle was my personal horn, which is uh, a Medlin double. Um, the Yamaha had the most resistance of all three horns. And uh, the Alexander 103 had slightly less resistance than my Medlin. So if a comparison of two, uh, admittedly, very different Geyer style horns, the the Yamaha and the Medlin don't play like each other at all, which goes to show just because a horn is of the same type doesn't mean it's going to play the same way in any way, shape, or form. Um, the, of this comparison, the Alexander 103 was uh, the least resistance. Um, so I would say, uh, no, the Alexander 103 does not have a uh, higher resistance than uh, Geyer style horns. Um, probably has a higher resistance than like a Rauk or a Berg or some of the more free blowing kind of style horns. Okay, one more check for comments here. Thank you, thank you everyone for participating. And thank you everyone for all of the comments earlier letting me know about the sound issues. I think I got five to 10 minutes in, but I just gotta, I just think of it as a practice run. Um. Thank you, everybody. I'm planning to do this again um, on Friday afternoon. I may or may not have Mark with me. I forgot to ask him. Uh, and I will see you then. Uh, thank you.